morning, Nana. Good morning. Good morning, Nana. It even knows my name. Yes, it does. <laughs> what we're doing is taking webcam technology, which has been around for several years, putting it on a mobile platform that's capable of navigating around the home and allowing family to visit loved ones virtually. Basic platform, you have to have locomotion, you have to have drive systems, you have to have battery power, you have to have sufficient sensors such that any kind of automatic navigation is capable. A blind man in a strange environment without a cane, without any orientation whatsoever, is not particularly able to get around by himself. But if you give the blind man a cane and let him tap his way around his room for a while, he learns his environment pretty quick and afterwards can get around routinely. In a lot of instances, better than you or I. Well, there's, there's a cup for my uh, granddaughter. She's a teacher. Hello there. How are you doing? We need to see our loved one's face in real time to know that this afternoon she's better than she was this morning and the next day she's better than what she was the day before. It is 10 a.m. 10 a.m., huh? Well, I'm still awake. Have you taken your medicine today? Well, uh, let me get my pill box and I'll check. Would you please show me your pill box? There you go. Can you see it? Open up the top so I can see. Okay, there's the bottom part that I haven't had a chance to take yet. It's not time. And these others are all empty. There's one, two, and three. Thank you, Anna, very much. You're quite welcome. I think it, my mother reacted very positively to it. I think that, you know, it seemed friendly and, you know, not threatening. And um, the fact that, you know, it could ask her questions like about her medications, things like that. I thought that was very good. It would really allow me to allow her to stay at home in her own environment much longer than otherwise because at the stage she is right now I can't be sure that she actually did certain things. We found out that she thought that she had eaten and then come home and find what she thought she had eaten still in the microwave. It isn't scary, that's one thing. Uh, and it's kind of fun talking to it. And I didn't have to do any, push any s switches or anything like that. And I could hear instructions as to what I should do very clearly. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. My brother that lives in Michigan that, of course, doesn't get down here very often is concerned about mom and all like that. Um, he would, with the software, if he had the correct software, he would be able to yeah. check in on her and yeah. see how she's doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the ability to remotely visit or virtual visit or monitor from anywhere that internet access, especially high-speed access is available, would allow him to observe what is going on throughout the house instead of just one or two fixed locations. The hardware is not particularly unique. Most of the hardware has got extremely low cost in the last five years. So generally there's other robots that can almost do what we can do, but they cost eighty to $120,000 each. We focused on low cost manufacture from our initial designs over four years ago. This is a CareBot personal computer robot. 
The blinking lights tell us what the robot is doing. Uh, what we're looking at here is the CareBot PCR 1.4. At the very top, we have the RF data communications link, which connects the robot to the PC. We then have a pan head and tilt face with a video color video camera, as well as the facial LED status system, which tells us whether or not any given motor is operating, whether the battery is charged sufficiently, or whether or not the sensor array is scanning. The speaker is down here. This speaker goes to an amplifier, which has a text-to-speech converter on the inside. This module is the RF video link that allows this camera to be linked through a wireless means to a PC. As we go down, we have the compounded sensor array, which has different sensors on it. Three looking down, two looking up, and then the two looking outward. These are infrared looking up and down, and in the center are the sonar and IR. A stepping motor completes it. We have here the vacuum cleaner, which is raised and lowered by this motor over here, which allows the vacuum to be lowered and raised on command by the robot's brain, what we call the gecko brain. These are the 11 inch drive wheels. These are the drive motors. They're um, microcellular polyurethane. They're equivalent to 60 pounds of pressure in a bicycle tire. Uh, can't mar, can't damage, don't pick up anything. And yet because of their large size, they can go across tile carpet traverses pretty readily. We've used off-the-shelf hardware as much as humanly possible. The RF data link is off the shelf, the sonar is off the shelf, the text-to-speech, the uh, digital infrared rangefinders are off the shelf, the batteries, the drive motors are off the shelf. And now granted, there's modifications that we make to some of these off-the-shelf items, but they're essentially 95% original. Now the rest of the electronics are all custom which we've developed internally. Now what we see here is first the cabling that goes to the RF modem as well as to the head systems for the pan tilt and the video camera. Coming down we have the text-to-speech board, we have the head distribution and management system, we have the power supply for that system. Coming down further, we have the amplifier again that boosts the text-to-speech to drive the speaker. We have the general input-output board. This is the hub where the various subsystems connect. This is the sonar board. This is the motor controller board that keeps the motors going the same speeds such that the robot can go straight lines. These are the power drivers that actually power the motors and then finally we have the fuse block which is, gives us fuse protection for all these systems as well as these two drive motors. You'll also note that we're using a wheelchair gel cell in this. We could just as easily use a deep cycle marine battery here but for safety reasons some people prefer the gel cell. Basic technology for this robot to work has been the PCs that we've seen develop for the last 20 years. They've gotten so powerful and so inexpensive that by using an existing PC through an RF data link, we're able to get exceptionally long battery life. What's unique about the system isn't as much the hardware as it is our software, which takes this sensor-rich, long battery life platform and allows it to navigate automatically around most homes and workplaces. This is actually showing us what's going on inside the robot's brain. There's actually, depending on how you count, 175, 200 sensors on the robot. So what we've developed is sensor fusion technology that is displayed here. So we're not seeing exactly what the robot sees, we're seeing a fused or composite vision of what the robot sees. In this box, we're seeing the long-term memory. This is the map that the robot's building depending on what it's seen in its environment as it's navigated about the home or office. We've designed this from inception to be low-cost, high-volume manufacturable. 
from a clean sheet we've designed to sell for as low as two to three thousand dollars and upward. It's not a small robot, so it is intrusive to a degree. Uh, we've had instances where Grandma said it was just entirely too stark, and she would literally put lace on it to personalize it. So we feel we have a good concept for what the shroud should look like, but have honestly lacked the funds to retain those top design houses to do the shroud. So I see that as quite honestly one of the first things we need to do to go to market. Our market research has shown that if we cost less than two months nursing home, which is typically several thousand dollars, seven to eight thousand dollars easily, that we would have a ready market. We believe that to be true. How many people, 65 or older, live by themselves? That's target market to start with. How many have children with household incomes of $60,000 or more that can probably afford this new kind of caregiving system? Well, in all of the country, there's 1,300,000 elderly people living by themselves with children with that kind of income. There's many instances where grandma and grandpa are both alive and in their 80s and have children who can afford three to five hundred dollars a month in order to pay for this robot on a two or three year note. So the market gets very large quickly and because of our advanced low cost platform and our extraordinary level of self navigation, we have a real opportunity to do a lot of good for a lot of people.